Greetings from the Center for Teaching Excellence. I am Tom Grady, and I'm the Faculty Assistant Director. This video is being created to provide faculty with a template for backwards course design. A link to the blank backward design template is provided at this website and it's referred to as UBD Template 2.0. This template walks faculty through the stages of backward design. However, if you are in need of the template with descriptions of each section, you can see the table below. There's also a link to the document containing the template with descriptions provided below, and it can be downloaded for free. Let's begin. Stage one is desired results. In this box, you'll list your established goals, learning outcomes, objectives for an individual lesson, unit, or course. See, that's the beauty of this template. You can use it for all three. We move over to describe the transfer of learning that will occur. Students will be able to independently use their learning too. Here, this refers to how students will transfer the knowledge gained from your lesson, unit, or course, and explain how they'll apply it outside of the context of your course. In these two boxes, we'll list the meaning, understandings. Students will understand that. This refers to the big ideas and specific understandings students will have when they complete the lesson, unit, or course. Over here, list essential questions. This refers to the provocative questions that foster inquiry, understanding, and transfer of learning. These questions typically frame the lesson, unit, or course, and are often revisited. If students attain the established goals, they should be able to answer the essential questions you as the faculty member list in this box. The last aspect of stage one is acquisition. Students will know. This refers to the key knowledge students will acquire from the lesson, unit, or course. This box, students will be skilled at, refers to the key skills students will acquire from the lesson, unit, or course. List that information here. Upon completion of stage one, you guessed it, we move to stage two and we provide evidence and assessment of student learning. What's your evaluative criteria? You will list that in this box. This refers to the various types of criteria that students will be evaluated on. The assessment evidence. What are the performance tasks? This refers to the authentic performance tasks that students will complete to demonstrate the, the desired understandings or demonstrate they have attained the goals that you have already identified. This also refers to your learning outcomes. The performance tasks are typically larger assessments that coalesce various concepts and understandings like large projects or papers. However, we can include other evidence. This refers to other types of evidence that will show if students have demonstrated achievement of the desired results. This includes quizzes, tests, homework, etc. This is also a good point to consider incorporating self-assessments and student reflections. Lastly, we get to stage three the learning plan. Here we will include summary of key learning events and instruction. This stage encompasses the individual learning activities and instructional strategies that will be employed. This includes lectures, discussions, problem solving sessions, 
active learning techniques, whatever your key learning events are and instructional methods, that's what you'll list in stage three. Again, remember the key concept of backwards design is begin with the end in mind. This guide can be accessed by clicking on this link. Again, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I can be reached extension 7292 or you can contact me via email. Have a great class.